All right, that's what you call a mixed bag. Hey guys, this is my review for Alita Battle Angel. Now this is a movie that James Cameron has been trying to make for almost as long as apparently he had been trying to make Avatar. But for some reason, just between complications with the funding for the film, the film itself in terms of its production, its pre-production, as well as him working on the Avatar sequels, he eventually stepped down from directing the film and he gave it to probably the person that made me raise my eyebrows the most, which was Robert Rodriguez. I like Robert Rodriguez. As a director, he is basically an indie filmmaker who has been making movies that he wants for as long as he's been basically making films. You can definitely tell that he enjoys what he makes. Yeah, uh, some of his movies are very interesting choices. Some of his movies have not been very good, and admittedly he has lost his touch a little bit over the last few years. But in terms of how now with big budget movies like the Jurassic Park films or other stuff they give these big huge hundred million dollar projects to directors who have barely worked with a budget over five million and then producers can basically take hold and do what they want with it. Robert Rodriguez is that filmmaker who works with that budget but he has over two decades of experience. I felt comfortable with him in the role. The only thing I felt a little bit worried about is his pacing ideas and admittedly that does come into play in this film but first off I want to talk about just how freaking good the visuals are in this film yeah admittedly everyone was kind of weirded out by the idea that her eyes are so fucking big but apparently that has something to do with the manga which by the way I've never read it but for how much is in this movie I imagine that it's somewhat reminiscent of the material but the effects on Alita's face are fantastic it's pretty cool that the girl who played her, who was oddly enough the girl from the Maze Runner movies, not even like one of the main characters, just one of the side characters. She is underneath all this facial stuff, but you can tell that they're mixing her emotions with the animation on her face, and then the lighting, everything works so well with her. She looks so fucking good in this film that there's a lot of times where I'll say she looks more detailed than the person she's talking to. Now obviously you can tell that it's CG, but it's goddamn close. In terms of facial reconstruction and facial kind of animation with a live action character, this is the best shit I've ever seen. This is amazing. And it's not just her, it's the entire world. The world building in this film is incredible from a visual standpoint. Whether it's from George Stone the City, to Rollerball, to kind of how this uh, cyberpunk sort of world has established itself. We're basically getting CD Projekt Red's uh, cyberpunk game early. The immersion with these characters, like there's people who literally have just a face and the rest of it is all cybernetic stuff, but it looks goddamn seamless. And the action scenes work so well with this animation. Robert Rodriguez keeps a good eye on what matters. He doesn't do shaky cam shit. You see everything in all of these action scenes. The rollerball sports scene is one of the best scenes in the movie. There's a lot of fight scenes in this movie that got me going. I was really into it. And the action in this film is incredible. It is very well done. It's very well shot. It's fantastically rendered. And it is definitely like a, a, a munching popcorn mitt. However, when the characters start talking is when the movie starts to go downhill. And I'm not talking about just certain parts, I'm talking almost the entire movie. Every scene there's dialogue, the film just almost becomes a cringe fest. The dialogue in this film is either a exposition landfill, a cringe fest, are some of the most bland, boring shit in the entire film. You basically go back and forth between the three throughout the entire movie. And sometimes they even repeat themselves when they don't need to. We're seeing that being established by the characters. The girl who plays Lita, she's good. And obviously she is playing this character who has lost her memory and is kind of melding her past as a warrior with this sort of new age child mentality. But everyone else, like Christoph Waltz kind of looks like he's sleepwalking through the movie. The guy who plays the love interest, Hugo, he's fucking terrible. Marshal Al Ali is wasted. I don't even know why he's in this movie, except to look like the replacement for Wesley Snipes as Blade. 
and Jennifer Connelly's in this movie, and she's wasted. There are so many cameos in this film. I swear, I think Michelle Rodriguez is in this movie. I know for a fact that Jai fucking Courtney is in this movie. When he appeared on screen, I was like, fuck no, no, you can't make him a character. I literally said that out loud because I just couldn't stand to see him on screen. And then Edward Norton's in this film too. I'll leave that for you guys to figure it out, but there's a lot of cameos from different characters in this film, which are just, it's just strange to see these many people in this film. And going back to the dialogue, I was amazed to see that this was written by Cameron because Cameron usually knows how to do good pacing, but this feels like five different stories trying to shove it into one film. My friend and I kept, were exhausted by the end because we thought that the film had ended at least three times previous. And when the film does finally end, we're like, oh, thank God because there's so many click like switch and bait things and there's a lot of moments that are supposed to be heartfelt but we were just laughing because of how fucking funny it was. While the dialogue is cringy and while the story is a little bit predictable, there are some spots that will actually surprise you. Not like take your breath away or anything, but I was like, oh, I was that about, a, about two or three times in the film, which I commend that for considering how much goddamn story there is in this film. You can tell that they are trying to establish a lot more. There's definitely stuff that must have been cut um, because there's a lot of moments where you just feel like you're behind. Like, I felt behind this whole movie as the story was being established. At one point she goes into this bar and she starts trying to rally these other hunter killers to her cause. I was like, wait, what? When, when did this happen? When, 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 where did this motivation come from? And that's like how Robert Rodriguez's last few movies have been. Machete Kills, definitely the second Sin City movie. It just never gives itself time to breathe. And this movie is running at full tilt the whole time. And it never takes a moment to stop and establish itself and give us some breathing room. It never does that. It's full tilt the whole time and it suffers for that. So while I did enjoy this movie, I think it is definitely a very entertaining film. I would actually watch it again, specifically for the technology. I saw this in IMAX, so you definitely gotta see it in IMAX. The 3D tech was fantastic. The effects were great. The fight scenes are really cool. There are some cool surprises. I was very entertained through those parts, but then when they start talking, the movie immediately goes downhill and it's a very, like give and take sort of relationship with this film because there's some good, but there's a lot of bad to it too. And the film sets up a sequel as well, which I admit I would be interested in, but don't take seven fucking books or whatever and put it into one because that's just too much. There's just so much elements in this film. There was too many themes trying to be crammed in. The film didn't really know what it was trying to be. One thing I'll definitely be surprised of, if this is PG-13, they get away with a lot. They get away with a lot of murder in this film. There's a lot of people who are decapitated, cut in half, uh, ripped apart. And there's a part, there's one part in particular that I did not think could happen in a PG-13 movie, but it does. Pretty gnarly, I'll give him that. It's a cool idea, I'm happy I saw it. I would willingly see this again, but it is a bad, fun movie going in. Just letting you know that. I know a lot of people who would not enjoy this film. They would think it's probably garbage, and they're totally right to say so. Yes, I did enjoy it, but I'm going to call garbage out when I see it. So in the end, my rating for Alita Battle Angel. Whew. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 7. I, I enjoyed it. I think it's a cool time. The technology and the action scenes are something extremely well done. And they definitely deserve a viewing. But the story itself is <clears throat> a lot to take in. And the character interactions are not as good as they could be. And there's a lot of wasted talent in this film. A lot of wasted talent. But I would still suggest you see it. But see it in IMAX. It is a fun time. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Oh! Finally, it's out. If you guys check out Amazon Prime, Camp Death 3 in 2D has come out on Amazon Prime. Very happy to announce that for these guys. They let me watch the film ahead of time, and I've been giving a little bit of shout outs for this because it was filmed up here in Canada, and I gotta give my Canadian filmmakers some uh, shout outs, so definitely check it out. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.